Hey, welcome to church online. So good to have you here. So glad that you've joined us today. And how amazing. Today is Pentecost Sunday, which is when we remember as the church, capital C, all around the world, when the Holy Spirit came and filled the first believers. And I find it interesting anyway, that they were in a room and that's where God met them. And my prayer today throughout the service is that wherever you are, whatever kind of upper room you might find yourself in, whether that's the kitchen, the bedroom, the front room, the living room, that you would be met by God's presence, that we would be full of his presence, full of his power, full of his joy and his peace today as we worship together. So Gideon's gonna lead us in worship in just a moment, but allow me to pray before that time. Lord, I thank you so much for your Holy Spirit. I thank you that your presence can meet us wherever we might be. So today, we ask that you would fill us up, that we would become more aware of you, Holy Spirit, and that you would be the focus of our attention. In the name of Jesus, amen. Come on church, let's worship together. I'm gonna pass over to Gideon and the team. Come on church, we're gonna sing together this morning. Come on, we're gonna worship God from wherever we are, amen. This is no performance. Lord, I praise, worship. Words I can't afford. I'm not chasing feelings. That's not why I'm singing. You're the reason for my song. Come on. Cause I only wanna sing if I sing. I sing for you, my King. Oh, I can't imagine why I would do this show for high. Cause it's all to lift you high. Oh, you don't want perfection. Souls attention. All I have is what I'll give. Cause more than a song that lasts a moment, I live a life of honest worship. If I'm here to sing, then I'll sing with purpose. sing for you my king Ooh, I can't imagine why I would do this all for high cause it's all to lift you high
Thank you so much for your presence. And Lord, that's the cry of our hearts. We, we want to be with you, Lord. So in this moment right now, wherever we might be, I pray we would sense your presence. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, church. Hey, every week, as you would know if you've been tuning in, we take a moment just to thank God for the stories that we've heard of the good things that he's doing. And we just posture our hearts towards gratitude. I think it's so important, especially at this at this time and also we take a moment to pray together so I'm going to hand over to uh, Wayne and Joe who are our phenomenal head of pastoral and uh, they've got some stories to share and some things to pray about together as a community thank you so much Wayne and Joe you know God doesn't just want to meet our needs he wants to meet us because he loves us and he knows that when we meet him in prayer whether for our own needs or the needs of other people we will love him too people have been getting in touch all week and sharing stories about God meeting their needs when they pray and when they ask other people to pray. Yeah, so our first story is uh, a grandmother of someone in Heart Church who tested positive for COVID-19, um, asked us to pray. And uh, the very next day, her temperature came right down and she didn't develop any further symptoms. Come on, that's great. great, isn't it? Praise God also for people responding to the gospel. We've been praying as a church that God will continue to build his church in this season. An example of that is just last Sunday, somebody responded to the gospel in Sunday service. And by Monday evening, they were on Growth Track online, which is a course that we run for people who are new to faith or new to heart church. And yeah, talking about Growth Track, um, in this season, we've been praying um, for people that they will deepen their relationship with the Lord and 20 people actually signed up online for Alpha and Growth Track. That's amazing. One of the things that I found are really exciting is the number of people from all over the world, really, who've been responding in faith as they're hearing stories in our Sunday services about others' prayers being met mm -hmm. and are themselves requesting prayer. So we've got quite a lot of prayer requests coming up right now. Yeah, so um, as we go through the list, there might just be something that resonates with you and I just really encourage you to pray into that as we go through. So our first prayer request is uh, a family got in touch um, asking us to pray for their young child who was experiencing breathing problems, um, which actually could have long-term effects. An old lady in church has asked us to pray for her son who has a blood infection. Hmm. A woman in church um, has been experiencing some uh, problems with her landlord, um, some conflict really, and she's asked us to pray because it's actually affecting her business. 
another woman has asked us to pray for our aunt who had a stroke this week. Um, we're also praying for a young woman in the church um, who has asthma and she's really been quite unwell uh, for the past two weeks. There's a, a woman in the church who some time ago had an operation on her knee. The operation appeared to go well, but in the last week she's required a further operation. To, we're praying that a speedy recovery occurs to that physical injury. And also there's a family who've been in touch. They, they, they left the UK and moved abroad. And because of the lockdown restrictions that are in place in the country where they are now, mm -hmm. they're unable to, to, to move away from the hotel where they've been staying. And it's really causing them a limitation moving on to the next stage of their life. Yeah. And a lady in America got in touch and asked us if we would pray for her son, um, who recently had a bad fall and sustained an injury to his head. And there's somebody asked us to pray because she's involved in a dispute over student finance. And somebody else who's asked us to pray because a family member is critically ill following heart surgery. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you that you are a good, good father and you give good gifts to those who ask you. So we come right now and we'll present these needs to you. And we say, Lord, move in power. Lord, yes. those who need supernatural healing as only you can work, Lord, then bring yes. that supernatural healing. Those who need wisdom to deal with conflict and difficulty, give them supernatural wisdom. Mm. Oh, Lord, those people who are in financial need, those mm. people who are anxious, those mm. people who are struggling with all kinds of needs, Lord, we know that mm. you are able to give to us from the riches of your glory, mm. exceeding abundantly, more than we can ask or even imagine. So we present these needs to you. Yes. And we say, God, show yourself strong. Mm. Move in power. Yes. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Just um, as we go, please keep your prayer requests coming in either at amen at heart.church or now you can go onto the website and use a form there where you, if you've got a prayer request or a need for support, you can just fill the form in and we can get right on it straight away. Have a great week, everybody. Bye for now. Thank you so much, Wayne and Joe. What a phenomenal thing it is to stand together as a family, to celebrate and to ask God to, to intervene in situations. Such a beautiful thing because we're not just here as individuals, we are part of a community. And I wanted to say a huge welcome to you. If this is the first time that you've joined us online or maybe you've been coming, uh, joining online for a couple of weeks or this is the very first time you've decided to come and check us out and this is the first you've heard of Heart Church, we're so thrilled that you're with us. We love you, we love you, we love you. So why don't you actually just let us know in the comments right now. Um, just put your name, say, hey, I'm new, because we would love to just interact with you, connect with you, say hi to you, even if it is on this digital kind of platform thing. We want you to feel the love and feel the warmth. We love you, we love you, we love you. And um, right now, one of my favorite bits of the service, we've got some people who are part of our community, some families, some people that are gonna say a little hello. This is our moment where we would usually call it connect. And I wanna say that we can still connect online. So if you see something you like, let us know in the comments, something cute, something funny. Hey, speak about it, shout about it, comment about it. We would love to do that. So over to the families that we have for Connect. Hey, hey, Hi, Church. Hi, it's us, the Kikimpas. Bruce, Mama. Gloria, Tendo, and Amara. We miss you all. We've enjoyed church online. Thank you to the teams that are doing such a great job. And we look forward to seeing you all very soon. Bye. Bye. Hi Heart Hi, Church family. family, we miss you Mommy. so much and cannot wait to get back and hug as many people as I possible. Okay, <laughs> um, we just want to read a verse from 1 John chapter 4 and it's uh, verse 7 and it says, Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Bye Heart Church, we love you all. See you soon. Bye. Hey Church, how are you all? Lou here. Gosh, I'm missing you all so much. Missing being in church on Sunday, serving with my welcome team. And the hugs. I'm really missing the hugs. But at least I have the plant. And I'm thankful that we still get to have church on Sunday. And we get prayer night on Wednesday. And Lawrence, who knew? I mean, 
I'm thinking when we're back at KMC. You and Pasta on the platform, doing a set together. I mean, I'm just saying. But in the meantime, I really look forward to when I get to see you all again. So stay well, take care, and God bless. Bye. Epic. I mean, who doesn't love the connect part of our services, especially online? I know all the introverts are probably preferring this. They're like, could we do this every week? Just like have it on the big screen when we come back to church one day. Hey, I love it, I love it, I love it. But from me, just a few notices um, for the different things that are going on during this time. Can you believe tomorrow is the first of June. I mean, this year is going so fast and so slow <laughs> at the same time. It's crazy, but every year in June, we make an effort as a church to be generous and we want to be generous throughout the year, but we take a, a, a special approach and we become intentional in our generosity over the month of June. It's called Generous June. The postman is about to knock on my door. <coughs> Calm, bro. Man's a recording church. So keep this in or don't keep it in, Ryan. Maybe it's a bit of a blooper. Every year in June, we make an effort to be generous. We want to be generous throughout the year, but we take June to be intentional about our generosity. So we call it Generous June. So this year, obviously it's going to look a little bit different, but you've got an opportunity to be generous in your home and maybe make a cup of tea for somebody, clear the table, make dinner. I can feel the people nudging each other in their homes <laughs> as they're watching this but be generous in the home maybe drop some flowers off at someone's doorstep from a socially acceptable distance and um, that would be a beautiful thing to do just caring for one another being generous during this time maybe it's as simple as a phone call let's do something intentional this June to be generous to one to one another below you can see our weekly schedule same as every week we're continuing being present and engaged online. So I want to invite you on whatever day suits you to make use of that to, to engage. And obviously we love Sundays, we love that you've tuned in today. And I want to encourage you, why not invite this service that you're watching right now to somebody in your world? Just copy that link, hit that share button, drop them a text message, say thought you might like this, because we want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to hear the good news of hope and of the love of God today. So why don't you share that invite someone to church online is super super easy we'd love for you to do that and last from me in terms of notices if you want any extra information or figuring out how you can engage with church why not head to our website heart.church it's that simple you just type it in you'll find us and on there um, you can put your prayer requests in now. We've just added that as an update. There's various information about courses and just a bit of a flavour about who we are as a church. So I want to encourage you, check out the website for more information. And as always, you can email amen at heart.church if you've got any prayer requests. Or if you're new, you can email hello at heart.church as well. And we would love to connect with you and point you in the right direction. In a moment, Leah Copsey is going to lead us in our offering. So why don't you prepare yourselves to give as we continue in our worship. Thank you so much, Leah. Cheers. Hi, everyone. We're going to bring our tithes and our offerings to God now. Hey, listen, if you're tuning in for the first time, we don't want you to feel like you have to give. You're so welcome to. But if you just want to watch for a few weeks and find out what this is all about before you decide if you're going to give, that's fine. And hey, even then, if you've been watching for a few weeks, there is no pressure for anyone to give in this moment. I love what Mark and Tamsin shared last week about stories of how they've given and God has been so good to them in giving. And that's the reason why we do this. There are so many of us that have learned that this moment is a great moment because God is so good and we love to give to him. We do it to worship him. So different ways to give are going to come up on the screen. All different ways to give online, which you can follow either right now while I'm speaking or you can follow them at any point and give during the week. And I think I, I said this last time I did the offering, but it's worth saying again, that as someone talks in this moment, it's not about convincing us to give, it's about encouraging us as we give. And the scripture I want to encourage us this morning with is James chapter 1, verse 17. It says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Everything we have is from God. And that's why we can be grateful in this moment. 
because if we've got something to give, it's from him. He's given it to us. So we get to give it back to him and we can say, thank you, God, that you've given to us, that we get to do this. And hey, you know, if you're struggling this morning financially and uh, you're giving in faith, well, you can be grateful that you've got something to give. But also we're learning from this scripture that everything is God's. Everything that comes into our hand comes from him. Wages, benefits, gifts, anything. And what that means is God owns everything. He can cause provision to you to come from anywhere. So we can have faith and we can be encouraged in our faith as we give. So let's pray. Thank you, God, that you have given to us and that we get to give back to you in this moment. Everything we have is yours and we give it back to you. We put this portion in your hand to honour you and we put it in your hand for you to use and bless others through what is given today. Amen. Thank you so much, Leah, for leading us there. Right now, we're about to go into the message and we've got Mark Ritchie, who's one of our elders here at Heart Church, coming to speak to us. Mark is a phenomenal speaker. He's had the privilege of speaking all around the world and it's a privilege that we get to hear from him today. I'm excited about what he's going to share because we're in a series about the fruits of the Spirit. And what better thing to talk about on Pentecost Sunday, the day where the Holy Spirit filled the early church for the first time. And guess what? The Holy Spirit's not just meant to stay on the inside of us. We're meant to see the fruit of his work in our lives. And that's what we're talking about today. Mark's going to be preaching on love, just like Pastor Malcolm did last week. And what a phenomenal message that was. So we're already in and we're already excited about this series. So get your Bible and your notepad ready, get comfortable as Mark comes and preaches the word of God to us. Thanks, Tando. Hey, Heart Church, how's everyone doing? Hope you're doing good. The weather this week has been unbelievable. So I was working in the loft at home and I'm going to be honest with you guys, I had my top off. It was very, very warm. It's the middle of the day, I'm working hard. I get a call, it's from a minister. I answer the call and start speaking. I think it's an audio call. It's not an audio call, it's a video call. And there I am talking to this pastor with no shirt on. Oh, it was awkward, it was awkward. And then I'm speaking to this minister and I'm like, oh, 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 sorry, I thought it was, I thought it was, I thought it was an audio call. And then I'm saying to him, oh, no, I promise you, I do have trousers on. I do have trousers on. <laughs> wow, well, you know, from Matt Ritchie, this is the kind of stuff you're going to get, isn't it? But listen, I'm so excited to be talking to you from Galatians chapter 5. And I thought Pastor Malcolm did an amazing job last week as we were talking about the fruits of the Spirit. And Galatians 5 verse 22, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. The fruit of the Spirit. I love it. I absolutely love the thought that we're looking and we're digging a little bit into this. And I was praying and I was asking God for a little bit of help on this. And, you know, um, I saw a bit of a picture and I want to paint the picture for you. It's a picture of a waiter in a restaurant. Do you remember those? It's a little while ago now, but I'm sure we can still remember. And the waiter has got a um, he's got a tray and he's carrying bowls or something, but no one can really see what's in the bowls because he's carrying the tray kind of up to up past his shoulder, up like this. And uh, everything is completely fine. No one knows what is inside those bowls until something trips him up. And when something trips him up, everything is out. We can see everything. Over he goes and everything that's in the bowls comes out. And, you know, I wanted to kind of talk about this picture. You see, you know, the Bible here says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, love. But yet, I think that we are good at doing a balancing act in which we don't really show what's inside of us. 
You know, most of life, we can normally do this kind of really cool balancing act, just like that waiter. No one could see what was inside the bowls. And just like that, we're really good at being able to kind of hide what is really inside of us until we get tripped up. You know, when stuff happens, when things come along and challenges happen, when some stress comes into our life, that is often when what is really inside of us actually comes out. You know, maybe during this season of lockdown and this tough trial, and maybe some of us, it's been challenging. Maybe you're homeschooling your kids. Maybe there's been a bit of illness. Perhaps there's been some stress in the, in the home. You know, these are the things that kind of like suddenly it's just like it's tr life's tripped us up and everything is inside of us comes out. It all comes out. And what is coming outside of you in this season? What is coming outside of you? Is it like, you know, it talks here about, you know, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Is it love that's pouring out of you? Or is it anger? You know, I know some people have got really angry recently and, 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 and they go on social media and they pour out their anger. You know, they're, like their bitterness, their, their bile, they're like absolutely raging. They're incensed about everything. I heard it on the radio a few days ago where somebody was so angry and they were shouting and the BBC guy says, oh, what? I, I never caught your name. What's your name? And he says, my name's Tim. They call me Angry Tim. And, you know, I thought, wow, you know, that's how he wants to be labelled as Angry Tim. You know, what's inside of us when we get tripped up, it comes out. And what is inside of you? What is inside of me? Life trips us up. Things happen. We get, we get into some kind of agitation and it, it spills out. Maybe for you, this time has not been about kind of anger spilling out. Maybe you've got a little bit judgy. You know, um, <laughs> I find it quite funny that the police during this time of lockdown have been getting all these calls from neighbours, like, you know, grassing up, They're saying, oh, he's out again, he's had two exercise spots. And then, you know, I know that, that we're allowed to do that now, but a few weeks ago when it was only one, people were, oh, you know, he's had people round, he's had people round, they're all phoning the police. And I don't know about you, but... I've had to be really careful. I get getting a bit judgy. If I see people, like, oh, well, they're from different households. How can they be together? And did -da 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 -da. And you know, it's so easy at this time that what comes out of us is kind of like this judging spirit, this judging heart that we're looking at everyone and we're thinking, well, what are they doing? And they're not abiding the rules. And what about her? She's not. And it's like, wow, you know, maybe like life's tripped us up. And what's really inside of us has like come out. I want to say that like lockdown is not what put this into us. This is what's been inside of us all along. All that lockdown does is expose what's inside of us. It doesn't cause it. It exposes it. I did a mission a few years ago and um, I walked with a cross over Britain and it was a huge mission, 70 days walking with a cylindrical cross and we saw lots of people become Christians and we saw some healings and we saw wonderful things and at the end of it, wow, you know, I hit such a dark season, a tough time. That mission was called Cross Britain. And, you know, lots, some people talked to me and said, oh, do you think this has been caused by Cross Britain? This dark time, this horrible, I was going through all kinds of angst in my spirit. And I realized quickly that Cross Britain didn't cause it. Cross Britain, the mission, exposed what was already in there. And that's true for us now. Lockdown's not causing all of this stuff. Lockdown's exposing what's inside of us. 
Maybe you've been a bit selfish. Maybe you've been a bit short-fused. You know, I don't know what's come out of your heart at this time, but just like that waiter, he tripped and it all came out. What has been coming out of you? The Bible here says the fruit of the Spirit is love. One of my friends recently has been going through a really tough trial, horrendous challenge. And he said a really interesting thing. He said to me that he called out to God and he says, God, I'm finding this so painful. I'm finding this trial so hard. And he felt God say to him, wow, you know, dignify the trial. Meet the trial with dignity. You know, I wonder if through some of our tough stuff, through some of this hard challenge, we could actually meet it with dignity. I think about some of the things that bother me. I've got a challenge at the moment that is really like I'm finding quite tough. And I'm like, Mark, could, could you bring some dignity to this trial? Rather than it kind of bringing all this horrendous stuff out and rather than it bringing like this kind of like, oh, self and, and agitation, could it actually maybe, could some love come out of me at this time? See, incredibly, they shook Jesus up. They tripped Jesus. They spat in his face. They turned his world upside down. They pinned him to a cross. And when Jesus was shaken up and thrown around and everything spilled out, the Bible says in Luke 23, verse 34, what came out of Jesus on the cross was he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They threw Jesus upside down. They turned him up and they threw him and they cut him up. And what was inside of him was love and grace and mercy. Jesus, in his last moments, is able to say, Father, forgive them. He was able to pour out love and grace and mercy in his last moments. And I think about my stuff, my trials. If you throw me upside down and you turn my world upside down, what comes out of me? Is it the fruit of love? Or is it anger and selfishness and, and uh, a judgmental spirit? Is it bitterness? Oh, I want it to be that you turn me upside down and love comes out of me just like it came out of Jesus. He, he was able to love even though he was tripped up because what happens when you turn Jesus upside down is love comes out of him. The fruit of the Spirit is love. How can we be like this? All of us, you and me, we know how to we know how to put a good performance on when the bowls are up in the air and the waiter's walking fine. No one can see what's inside. We can all do that. But what about when we're tripped up? What about when it gets tough? What about when it gets hard? You're like super stressed out and a whole load of stuff comes out. And if you're like me, we're like, how can we do this when it's hard and it's tough and it's challenging? How can we have this fruit called love? But, you know, I'm so excited to say that, you know, the Holy Spirit is our co-worker on this. He helps us. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God gives us the ability to love. You know, like, you're maybe at the end of yourself. Maybe you're like, patience is running out. Maybe you're like, stressed out your mind. Maybe you're worried about the future and you're like, how can love come out now? And we've got to step back and say, Holy Spirit, would you give me the ability to love? Would you let this fruit of the Spirit called love be nurtured in me? 
oh, guys, I'm not speaking to you from a pulpit saying, oh, I've cracked this, you know. All you need to do is speak to my wife, speak to my daughter, speak to my son. They'll tell you. I'm far from the, the, the answer. I'm far from like the kind of got it all sorted guy. I'm still struggling with this. But what I'm doing is I'm saying, Holy Spirit, would you come and work with me so that you could help me to have the ability to love when I find it difficult and when I find it tough? Would you give me the ability to love when I'm at the end of myself? I wanted to say, can we let love spill out of us towards our world, towards your people, the people that you are in lockdown with, the people that you're in a lot of contact with, could you let love spill out of you? The fruit of the Spirit is love. Could you maybe this week be a little bit more patient? Could you be generous? Could you be full of grace? I, I find it funny that um, everyone is on Zoom meetings and we're all trapped in these screens where we're having to listen to our family members say things that we don't really love. And we don't always have the opportunity to get out the room that you can in normal times. Are we able to show patience? Are we able to show kindness? I speak to myself and I think about some of the people that I'm struggling with and I think, oh man, Mark, you could have been kinder there. You could have been, you could have shown a little bit more grace. <sighs> you know, like when you've got to say the same thing to someone for the 10th time, it can be pretty difficult to show grace, but maybe, maybe we could do this. Maybe we could let love spill out of us to our world, to the people that see us regularly. Could we ask God, could we ask the Holy Spirit to work alongside us so that we would show and cultivate this beautiful thing called love? Um, I, I'm, I've got L plates on. I've got L plates on. I'm still learning. I get it wrong. I messed up. My family in Scotland, they wanted to do a Zoom call and I was like, oh, I can't be bothered. And I wasn't great. I wasn't great. As as rubbish. I, I, I didn't let the spirit of love, like, spill out of me. I've got a learner plates on, but I want to allow the Holy Spirit to come and help me to cultivate this fruit, the fruit of love. Wow. But not only do we need to let this love spill out to our world, our people, but we must let this love spill out of us beyond our world, beyond our world. I am... Um, I want to challenge us, church. I want to really, really challenge us right now because I, I, I'm stirred up in my soul that, that Jesus has, has sent us and given us a revelation and given us a message and it's a message for us to share. And yet so often in the church, we keep it to ourselves. We don't show love to the world because we keep this to ourselves. I love football. I'm I'm really missing football. And um I uh I heard something that happened just before lockdown in the kind of Premier League in Turkey. And it's a footballer and he he used to play for Stoke, but now he plays for one of the Turkish teams. I'm 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 not sure I'm gonna get his name right. It's called Badu Nadea. Badu Nadea. And uh, he's a great player. And the manager of the team, whilst the game was going on, wrote a little handwritten note of tactics um, because the, the game was not going the way they wanted to. And they got, wrote him down, folded it up, 
And when they made a substitution, the substitute handed Nadua this, this, uh, Nadea this little bit of paper and knew were the tactics. And he read them. He's got a, per a message straight from the manager. And he's there on the pitch and he reads them. And then guess what he does? He folds it up and he actually eats it. He eats the note from the manager. It is brilliant. YouTube it, you'll see it. It is so funny. In his mind, he must have just been, so this is so important. And he, I don't know what was going on in his head. I don't want the opposition to see this note. So he actually ate it on the pitch as the game was going on. Wow. I saw that and of course it made me chuckle. But then I started to think and pray. And, you know, I thought, you know, Jesus has sent us with this message. Jesus has revealed this glorious truth to us as the church. And, you know, we are so often like that footballer. We, we get this revelation and instead of sharing it with everyone that needs to hear it, we just consume it to ourselves. It's like Jesus has given us this wonderful gospel, the revelation of the goodness of God. And it's like church have got it and they just like consume it. They're just like, oh, that's for me. You know, I, I, that's for me. I, I'm just going to have that. How selfish is it for church to think this truth is just for me. I'm going to actually consume it. I'm going to take it all. I'm going to take the word. I'm going to take it all. It's just for me. No, friend. We must let our love spill out to the world. This is not just for us as the church to take it and consume it. We mustn't just take this great revelation and eat it and have, that's it. No, we must spread this message. We must spread this message. I don't know if you know this, but this is absolutely amazing. But, you know, Bible sales have risen by 55% in April. In Great Britain, here in Great Britain, Bible sales have raised 55%. You might not know this, but 24% of UK adults say they have watched church online. Wow, 24% of UK adults have had a little look at church online. What about this one? One in 20 of UK adults say that they have started praying since lockdown happened. Oh, guys, I need you to know this. I need you to know this. We've never been at such a point before where the world is looking on and they're looking. They're having a look at Jesus. They're, the world... Many, many people are actually saying, my world has crumbled. What can I build my life upon? How about looking at this Jesus? Wow. People even now that are watching this, that are just having a little look. You know, I've been doing a few talks and then um, they've been going out and people have actually been becoming Christians whilst we've been doing the talks because people are having a look. Oh, church, this is not time for us just to get our word and just to consume it and to keep it to ourselves. This is our time for our love to spill out and to spread the good news. We must encourage people to get online and watch church. We must encourage people and bless people. We must kind of get stuff that we can be generous with, generous June, and all the different things that we can do to be kind. And we must show love to the people that are kind of desperately needing God. Wow, I'm so stirred by this. Let love spill out beyond our world. I've got a little challenge for you. I wonder if you could maybe do it. You know, during this time, there's a lots of people, like I say, that are just having a little look. They're not yet Christians. I wonder if anyone watching this, any of us in Heart Church, I'm going to do it. How about maybe you doing it? Why don't you get in touch with one of your maybe unchurched family or unchurched friends, people that are not yet Christian, and offer to pray for them? Do you know what I've done a couple of times? I've gone on WhatsApp and I've left them a voice note and I've said on the voice note, listen, I'm just going to pray for you. I've just been thinking about you and I want to pray for you. And I pray a huge blessing over their life. 
Could you go on WhatsApp and maybe bless someone this week? Let our love spill out beyond our walls, beyond our world, and let our love, the fruit of the Spirit is love, and that we would be compassionate to those that don't know God yet. Could you do that little voice note and pray for them? And don't pray a judgy prayer. Don't go on there and say, I am praying for your soul. I'm praying that you stop being evil and you start being a good person. No, 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 no. Leave a voice note that prays a blessing on them. That says, God's got great things for you. God wants you to flourish. God wants some great things. He wants healing and blessing and goodness for you. Leave a little WhatsApp voice note or do it another way. Leave an answer message on a phone. But why don't we let our love spill out beyond ourselves and out into the world? The fruit of the Spirit is love. They're not going to know us by our loads of words. They're going to know us by our love. They're not going to know us because, oh, we've got this, that, that's the church that's got this and they're going to know us by our love. Would you be able to be spilled out and for it to be love? Would you be able to ask the Holy Spirit to let you, to let you be enabled to love those, even those that are unlovely? Well, you know, I'm coming towards the end, but I'm just aware that there might be a few people that are actually watching this and you are maybe just having a little look. Maybe you don't go to a church and you've stumbled upon Heart Church and you're just having a little, just what's this about? You know, I want to tell you that God is crazy about you. He loves you so much. In fact, I want to tell you just one tiny little thing before I pray, and it's simply this, that, you know, I want you to imagine that there's a beautiful big castle. I'm Scottish, I love castles. I want you to imagine there's a big beautiful castle, and we get to that castle, but there's a huge moat around it, and we can't get inside. And we can see that the lights are on, and we can smell beautiful food. There's a banquet happening in the castle, but we can't get in because of the moat. You know, that's like us. God's got all those wonderful, beautiful blessings for you and for me. But there's this moat, this thing around God, and that's our sin. Our sin is between us and God. And what's the end of the story? Is the end of the story that we just look and we can see this brilliant banquet and smell the lovely food and hear the joyous sounds, but we can't get in. Is that the story of the Bible? No, John 3, 16, God sent his son, Jesus. And I want to tell you, do you know what that's like? Jesus died on the cross. And as he died on the cross, it's like the drawbridge came down. That drawbridge came down. Jesus died. He became a bridge so that we could come through Jesus into this wonderful banquet, into this wondrous celebration of the Father God who just wants to love you and he wants to absolutely throw the biggest feast because you're welcomed home. Jesus did that. As he died on the cross, he made a way possible. As I finish today, I want to pray a tiny little prayer. And I want to ask wherever you're watching this, in your kitchen, your front room, wherever it is, And maybe you could pray this prayer after me. Right now, wherever you're watching this, that maybe you could say, do you know what? I'm sorry for my sin and I come through Jesus. And you can know that God will, he will pull you in close. This is the prayer. Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you that Jesus came as the bridge. I'm sorry for for my sin, for my stuff. And I come through the cross into your arms. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we are so excited that if you prayed that prayer, we'd love you to get in contact. And hey, church, I set you a challenge. Why don't you let your love spill out to your world, but also beyond your world this week? God bless you guys. Amazing, thank you so much, Mark. I mean, what a phenomenal message. And for those of you that responded to accepting the love of God into your life, responded to that 
response that Mark led us in just then, I want to say congratulations. We are so thrilled and we join with heaven in celebrating for the decision made, turning around and following Jesus. It's such a phenomenal thing and we would love to help you on that journey. So please do let one of us know, maybe let the person who, who invited you to church know, let one of the team know because we would love to just congratulate you and just point you in the right direction as you start this journey of understanding the love of God more and more in your life. We are so, so thrilled. And hey church, we've come to the end of this service. Allow me just to pray and speak a blessing over you in this time and then we'll finish up. Lord, I thank you for every single person watching. And Lord, I pray for all of us that we would know your love, the, the depths of it, the, the dimensions of it, the, the amount that you love us, God. I pray that we would know it more and more and be convinced of it. In the name of Jesus, I pray your peace and your grace to be on every household, every person watching. In the name of Jesus, amen. Church, we love you so much. Don't shoot off. There'll be a bit of information about the courses and different things you can get involved in. Just coming up on a slide just after I go. But until next week or in the week, we'll see you soon. See you later.